everyone. Before we jump into this video, we just wanted to take a moment to let you all know that there are copies of Send It, the mountain biking board game available at senditboardgames.com. We have put it on sale for the holidays. So if you wanna head over there and pick up an awesome Christmas gift, there are only a couple hundred copies left. We will probably not be doing a second print run of Send It. So this is your last opportunity. And with the holidays right around the corner, I think Send It would make a great gift and it is available, unlike lots of other things. We're Sid and Mackie. Since 2014, we've been racing mountain bikes professionally and traveling in our van. But today's video isn't about bikes. Today, we're catching up with my siblings to see how their quarantine house building project is progressing. Why did you decide to build a tiny house? I just thought it'd be really fun to not have anything else in my life for about a year <laughs> and be really overwhelmed with lots of things. Well, I've never built anything before, so I thought it would be a good learning experience. To make money. Except you're not getting paid. Except I'm not getting paid. All right, it's um, November 9th, 2021. Mm -hmm. Alex, you wanna give us a little house tour? Of course, let's go. So, as you can see from here, it looks a little bit more like a house. If you're thinking, what house? Last summer, as a quarantine project, my three younger siblings decided to build a second house on my parents' property. They broke ground in late summer, poured the foundation, ran the plumbing, and then spent a few weeks preparing the timber for their post and beam frame. Over Thanksgiving of 2020, we helped them raise the frame. Over Christmas, we helped them install the roof, and in early February, we helped them install their windows. And in the last video, we helped them put up the straw bale walls. So if you correctly designed your house for a straw bale, you would just stack them up into nice little neat walls, strap them together, call it quit, put a little plaster on there, you got a house. We didn't do that. It'll basically have half of our beams exposed and half of it'll be in the wall, which will be quite nice. Yeah. But it also cool. involves a lot of cutting and notching like this. And so yeah. we're doing a lot of chainsawing, angle grinding to shape the bales into the perfect place. And then we slot them in, and then we put straps. Mackie is strapping down our straw bale. So since the last video, I guess what everybody saw was the straw bale put, being put up, all the notching happening, the strapping. And as you can see, not, you can't see any of that anymore. So we have plastered. Pretty much wow. fully plastered the entire house. Except for one tiny little secret, which we'll show you later. The electrifying of the casita has officially begun. We have our 100 amp breaker box. We're gonna put it right there, which is, this is a closet here. Um, got our tools set up there. Jim brought a bunch of tools as well. Yeah. And we went to the hardware store yesterday. This will get us at least started. I want to give a huge shout out to Josh, one of our patrons, who reached out when he saw in our videos that my siblings were doing this and said, hey, I'm an electrician. I have a lot of experience with straw bale and adobe plaster buildings. Would you like advice? And I was like, yes, please. So he has been super kind to take my calls and text back and forth with me and help me figure out how to actually do this. All of the wire we're using is 
gray coated, so that's underground feeder or UF wire. Apparently that's what you have to do for plaster and straw bale because UF wire is rated for being underground or in mud. Now that I have multiple workers, I've got Key and Bo out there and my dad over there, it's great because I can just kind of tell people, okay, go do this and then like figure out what the next step is. So my dad has been in charge of the electrical box. Here's the bathroom breaker. Black. Okay. White. Okay. And ground. Great. Nice. Tighten that up. Gave you a little more space here. I think it looks good. Nice job. It's like a nice little mushroom. Yeah, that's what I'm going okay, for. Okay, now it's sticking straight up. Good. Is it good? Yeah, you look stunning. Great, thanks. So we're gonna make plaster. Um there's a lot of different ways to make plaster. We're trying to do earthen plaster, which is um, completely natural. So the ingredients to plaster are dirt, which has been sifted, sand, straw, and water. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix it all together, either by hand or probably in that thing. And then we're essentially gonna slam it into the wall. Think of it like a mud fight. Uh huh kind of, you know. With a house. With a house. Yeah. And like it doesn't have arms so it can't throw back at us. But yeah, basically we're gonna slam it on, rub it in, and then slam on the next layer. Um, for the whole house. For the whole house. And some people prefer to use more like chemical ingredients because it will last a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But um, we have also heard of situations where it lasts about 17 years just like this. Mm -hmm. So we figure for our timeline, it's probably good enough. Okay. Um, we're also gonna add a little bit of that concrete bonding additive, which is okay. essentially a glue, just like a cup per wheelbarrow, so not a lot. Um, and that will essentially make it a little bit more hardy, such that like for weather, you know, snow, rain, whatever, it would be a little bit less vulnerable. We did this part over here um, and it has dried already. So you can see it's actually quite hardy and it sounds kind of like clay when you knock on it. Oh yeah. It's got a little crack and that's okay because this is not the final layer. After this, we'll then put a really thin layer of plaster that's exactly the color that we want. Okay. Probably with a couple other ingredients in it, like some oils and stuff like that, in order to really make like the Just final finish. Make it look finish. a little smoother. Exactly. But this is really the part that gives us the shape of the house. So for example, any of these indentations here, we'll want to fill in, in yeah. so that it's really the shape that we want it. And then the final layer will be that like one inch plaster layer. This is wood underneath here, like a windowsill. Yeah. And you can't plaster right onto wood because it'll just fall off, number one. Yeah. Number two, the plaster is wet enough that it'll make everything kind of rot and decay over time. Mm -hmm. So essentially we have to put a vapor barrier, like a moisture barrier, and this thing called lath, so that there's something for the plaster to sit on. And for this part, you have to add a little bit of sand to the plaster okay. to make it like stay on the surface as opposed to this one where it's really about So the actual in. mixture is different for the, the actual wood part. Mixture is different. Wow, okay. All right, so we put some dirt. We put some water. You kind of want it to be the texture of chocolate pudding. I would say you probably need a little more dirt. What I'm doing right now is I'm creating a base coat, which we call putty. So it's like chocolate pudding and it's putty basically. And this is the base coat that we're gonna essentially rub into the straw in order to make everything else stick to the straw. So if we didn't have this, it's likely that the next layer of mud would just fall off. Okay. So this is important to like create sort of a primer onto which everything else can stick. Basically take it and pop it. Oh my god. <laughs> and we really rub it in there. Like rub it. I'm having fun. You are? Your ball. Alright. 
I got it just right though. Yeah, how's this looking? I've, uh, I've been making this really big batch of chocolate pudding. Okay. I don't know. I hear you have to get the consistency just right, so. Here, we'll start. Give it a little, a little whiff. Thank you. <laughs> and now it's like just perfect. It's good, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Right. <laughs> mm. Oh my god. Oh, perfect. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Look at all these muddy people out here. What you doing, Key? We're mixing plaster. Yeah. And putting it on the walls in two layers. Oh, um, this, like mud. this is mud. We're gonna add some straw to this. This is the second layer. It goes on after that first layer. So now we're oh, adding straw here, to the plaster. That's our bucket. Yeah. That's one bucket for it. Well, actually, one and a half. One and a half buckets. Ideally, it would be more like chopped up than that, but life is uh, imperfect. This is what the mud looks like about 24 hours later. And it looks like some of it has dried and a lot of it has not dried, but it does make it look even more like a house. It's really pretty impressive. Here's these little things. Pretty impressive guys, pretty impressive. All right, y'all, house update. We're in the casita. If we take a little turn right here, you can see the beginning of our mud walls. Kiki, where are we at? So we are building uh, the ceiling slash eaves. Basically those boards right there. Cause as you can see, most of the house still doesn't have those boards. It's just ugly plywood. So yeah, we're gonna cover up all this plywood with boards so that this weekend we're having a plaster party and we can plaster all the way up to the boards without stopping. Nice. So that involves a couple Steps. We're too cheap to buy tongue and groove. Uh, what is tongue and groove? Tongue and groove is boards that fit together really nicely, um, but also. they're expensive. And so we're making our own. This is the ceiling board team. Ceiling board team. Ceiling okay. board team, Lily. We basically got a bunch of boards from our local sawmill and we're planing them ourselves. We are planing. This is a piece of wood that we're about to plane. And what happens when we plane is we take off this very top layer by running it through that machine there. When we send it through here, there's a bunch of little saws under there that shave off the top part. We run it through maybe once, see how it goes. Maybe it takes off all of the, the top part here. Maybe it doesn't, maybe we're not satisfied, so we run it through again. The final product looks like this. So we didn't even have to sand this or anything like that. We just sent it through the planer a few times. And then we're using a router to actually create these grooves here, um, which overlap each other uh, with, with the other board um, in a half lap kind of joint, similar to what you would do with tongue and groove ceiling if you were to purchase it. sitting on a scaffolding high up in the air. It's a little bit scary when I look down at the ground. Here are my feet. Basically, we are trying to install some ceiling boards um, on the eaves of the house. So up here, we basically want all of this to be covered with boards. So we have the boards here. So that's Bowden. He is stuffing straw in with a two by four and basically we just installed these but have not yet done the rest of the ceiling. And so first we put on this thing which is called a soffit vent. Um, it basically allows air to go up into our roof and we have this like cavity that goes all the way through the roof there which uh, makes it a cold roof. How exactly does a cold roof work? Basically a cold roof right, which is a vent that runs from our soft vent here through the entirety of our roof out the other side, creates this pocket of air that prevents the roof during the winter from going through like cycles of freezing and melting. And then after this, we put a board here and another board here. 
um, and that kind of makes a separate cavity between the ceiling and the wall. Today is the day of our straw bale plaster party. Let's go see what's happening. Over here we've got a mixing station. Katie is on it. Right now we are applying a putty coat oh, to sorry. plumbing pipes. Yeah, we're talking about green chili. And we're talking, we're talking about green chili, chili as one does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> New Mexico. Uh, so then they roast. Wow. Elise, what are you doing? Same thing. Yeah. Applying putty? Yeah. And what are you going to do after that? After that, Bowen's going to come and put the cob on it. Uh-huh, I see. Yeah. Oh my god, Bowen. You want to see me put a cob on? Yes, of course. Here we go. Wow, that seemed effective. And over here, we have the final step of the process, which is actually the first step of the process, which is sifting dirt. Eli, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just sifting dirt. <laughs> We started like this, where we want to have a nice shape where the plaster, the mud and the plaster meet the doorway. So we've attached this burlap with staples onto the wood and then we just stuff mud. We call it cob, but literally in here and then wrap this around. So on this side you can see we've been just quite quickly. It actually worked. We start down here and create the shape and then just rub this in. Isn't that amazing? That it works? It's gorgeous. And how do you attach it on the other side? Don't know. Do you know? I have no idea. This is the most fun part I've had yet. So Key, what just happened? The plaster just fell off the wall. Oh and, yeah. Uh, I can't really tell why think it might be too heavy, but we don't know if that means we should add more water, add more dirt, add more straw, or just give up. So today we did tons of plastering. But Woo! so we finished the top part of this north wall and it's looking super smooth, which is amazing. <laughs> How far along are we do you think with the outside plaster? With the outside, we are 75% there. Because we have like the porch lap, and then we have this top section here, but that'll go, I mean, if we manage to do all of that today, like, yeah, we could get that done another day. I took a really cold shower in mud today. These were white, <laughs> but mud is super fun. I love it. So before, with all the straw bale, you can't tell now as much, but there was, the corners are pretty wiggly. And what's really cool is that we could do tons and tons of shaping with the straw and mud mix that we had. So it's a pretty cool looking corner, huh? Yes. Others, much, yeah, this is the best Much one less wiggly. Yeah, the best <laughs> Way one. less wiggly than before. Go on through the front door. Boom. We look here, south facing Bancos. Wow, look at wow. the Bancos. Wow, all that sunshine pouring in. Hard as rock. So comfy, so sunny, so warm, cats everywhere. Imagine cats, you know, just 14 cats. cats 14 cats. Lined up across the bunkos. So this is like little living room. Mm -hmm. Very lived in. Then we move over here. 
There's gonna be a toasty warm wood stove. In fact, it's gonna be that wood stove right there. Mm -hmm. it's installed. Yes. Then you walk through here and you've got the kitchen. Beautiful bottle wall as the back. Beautiful bottle wall. Right Cooking, there. you see your beautiful just green and blues and sunlight streaming in. So you the view out the kitchen window. Kitchen window. It's not the most pretty right now, but it will but be. But verdant garden beds. That's the future. Cool, all right, so this is our like first room. Then we go through our glorious little archway and we'll go to the bedroom. Here's a little bedroom, all smoothed over and plastered as you can see. Cute little nicho. Nice. Mm -hmm. Put a little light in there, have some little, you know, knickknacks, little altar, whatever people want. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, go open up these doors. Gardens, vegetables. Beautiful. Flowers, whatever. Pigs, I don't know, maybe we'll get pigs. pigs. We want pigs. I'm gonna go to the sauna. Nice, look at that sauna. Look at that. Look at how smooth these walls are. Some smooth wall. We have a shower right here. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be the pool room. That's the best plaster room in the entire house. Actually, the wall behind you while you're pooing, that's the best plaster. Uh-huh. And that smooth finish. And you might see some cracks, but that's okay. This is not our final layer. I just want to emphasize that. Upstairs. Another nicho. Beautiful. So we got upstairs loft area. As you can see, it's so sunny. And it is November. Yeah. It's warm, we're in t-shirts, totally comfortable. Right, and nice. it's not even fully enclosed yet. Almost, but not quite. And yeah, this is the porch. Also all plastered and finished. Oh, and there's a secret shelf. There's a secret shelf. Oh yeah, you like the secret shelf. I love the secret shelf. Nice plastered detail in the whole house. Totally. All secret shelf. Wait, Alex, you missed a spot. What's oh, that? Oh no, how could we forget? That is gonna be our truth window. So we're gonna build a cute little door and it'll be a thing that we can open up to show that there's actually straw here because honestly, you can't tell. <laughs> It's a um, bit of a tradition in a lot of straw bale houses to have a truth window, which is just like some sort of opening in the wall in the plaster that like reveals that the whole house is made out of straw. We totally forgot about it until like the very, and that was the very last section of the whole wall. Yeah, it was even plastered. actually, somebody started it. So and we were like, like whoops, um, and decided not to plaster that one little bit, but it's kind of cool. You'll be able to walk up the stairs, uh -huh. open the truth window, look at this inside of the walls. Thanks for watching everyone. One more reminder, head over to senditboardgames.com and pick up your copy of Send It, the mountain biking board game today. I love this game because it involves the perfect combination of strategy and risk. Literally, you can be the last placed person on the board and you can win every time, just like I have the last three times. Don't believe any of these other fools. I've won all three times and I have dominated because of my superior strategy and intellect. Send it. I like that I feel like I can ride and do all the jumps and everything that I probably actually can't do in real life. I also like that I can beat my husband. Don't believe any of these other fools. Because it's one of the only games I can actually beat him at. So there's luck and strategy and I usually get lucky and beat him. Wick, what do you love about Send It? All right, Alex, what do you like about Send It? Getting second. <laughs>